Okay, namaste. <coughs> so, uh, in uh, the uh, coming weeks and uh, months, because it, this project will take some time, I propose to uh, uh, speak about the text I have translated from the Chinese, from Chinese, uh, which is called uh, uh, a brief explanation of the uh, uh, Dhyana methods. And the text is uh, by uh, one of the most, if not the most important personality of Chinese Buddhism. Uh, you may have heard Kumarajiva, who represents a very kind of a cosmopolitan trend in Chinese Buddhism. Uh, he is, uh, his father was Indian, his mother was Central Asian, and he was a, a great poet, a great literati. His uh, language is simple and amazing, uh, deep. Uh, he has the talent of expressing uh, very, in a simple way, the most profound ideas of uh, Buddhism. He is, so to say, his influence, I think, in no personality, even maybe Xuanzang, who is the most famous translator, no personality in uh, Chinese Buddhism has influenced the future the generations as much as uh, Kumarajiva did. He, the scope of his translation is just amazing. He uh, translated practically from all uh, important traditions of that time. Uh, he translated uh, the Mula Sarvastivada Vinaya. He translated uh, the works of Abhidharma like uh, uh, Cheng Shilun. Hmm? Uh, by Hari Varman, the uh, uh, Tatwa Siddhi Shastra, he translated uh, uh, the Mula Madhyamika Karikas with uh, the Pingala Chakshu's commentary to it, which is most studied work on Nagarjuna. He translated the Arya Devas. Uh, Shataka, he translated and became, so to say, the inspirer of the Madhyamika school called the Sri Shastra school in China. He translated the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Amitayu Sutra and was, so to say, the main initiator of the uh, Pure Land School, which is possibly the most important school of Buddhism nowadays. He translated the uh, Lotus Sutra, which is till present day one of the, if not the most influential sutra of Chinese Buddhism, uh, propagating the one Yana Buddhism, Ekayana Buddhism. He uh, translated uh, Vimalakirti Nirdesha Sutra. Uh, the list of his translation is just incredible. He translated the Pragya Paramita, Maha, the great Pragya Paramita Sutra in 25,000 verses with Nagarjuna's commentary, Pragya Paramita Shastra, which is one of the most studied work in Chinese Buddhism as far as meditation and philosophy is concerned. And uh, uh, it is not all, there are still many, many other things he translated. The list is just amazing. Now, uh, contributed to him are also some treatises on meditation. The one I have translated is uh, one of the shortest ones. The uh, Professor Willemann, uh, in uh, some years ago, translated the other treatise, uh, uh, 
uh, one treaty called uh, Siwei, the Siwei, uh, what is it? Siwei Yao Li Fa, which we have translated into English as the essence of uh, contemplation or something like that. Then <coughs> there is uh, uh, Zhuo Chang San Mei Jing, huh? uh, the uh, Samadhi of uh, sitting in, in Chan, Indiana, uh, treatise. Uh, then there is uh, uh, Chang Mi Yao Jie, the secret Dhyana practice uh, explanation. Then the treatise, present treatise, is called uh, the short explanation of the methods of Dhyana. Hmm? Uh, some of these treatises have already been translated. Uh, this treatise is possibly the last one which has not yet been translated, but I consider it for quite important because it gives the essence of how the dhyana was practiced in the in the Naga in uh, Kumarajiva's time. Kumarajiva is the inheritor very important to understand, of the Kashmiri Buddhist yoga tradition, which uh, Kashmir, as you may know, in 3rd and 4th century, in the time of uh, the uh, great Gupta dynasty, which uh, produced uh, some of the most excellent Indian thinkers and yogis. Kashmir was... Uh, among others, with Ayodhya, with Mathura, and so on, but especially Kashmir was a center of uh, yoga, not only of the Buddhist yoga, also of the Hindu yoga. Uh, this uh, tradition, uh, it was, as you may know, also the place where the Mahavibhasha Shastra was uh, written. Hmm? which compiles the essences of the Sarvastivada philosophy and also the yoga based on the uh, Sarvastivada tradition. Uh, as you may know, Sarvastivada also uh, is related to uh, many different schools which, may, which have, it has produced in terms of criticism or in terms of uh, uh, its uh, further development, hmm? like uh, Sankrantika, most important is, of course, Sautrantika. <clears throat> now you may know Abhidharma Kosha of Vasubandhu, one of the, if not the uh, most important philosoph Buddhist philosopher of the this period. So, uh, uh, Kumarajiva himself, he studied this tradition of uh, yoga. He, as I have explained, he initiated many different schools of Buddhism. Uh, the uh, the Tattva Siddhi Shastra school, which he has translated, the uh, I have mentioned the Pure Land school, hmm? <coughs> which uh, became very influential in uh, then uh, the Lotus Sutra, which is related to the Pure Land school also, and uh, which uh, became uh, predominant in uh, the East Asia, huh? in Japan and Korea and Vietnam. Uh, he uh, initiated, as I have mentioned, the Madhyamika Study School, Chinese Madhyamika Study School. And uh, uh, so to say, most of the important traditions of Chinese Buddhism uh, relate to him. 
and uh, rightly because his uh, immense learning and of course he was also an extraordinary personality there is a historical Kam, uh, Kumarajiva, there is a legend Kumarajiva, there are incredible stories about his uh, yoga hmm? and about his life in general. He was uh, uh, trained in the strict Vinaya, but uh, lately on the desire of the Chinese emperor, he married a wife chosen for him the most beautiful uh, lady of the country. Then uh, his disciples whom he trained in Vinaya, they were uh, very embarrassed, so they asked him, uh, what shall we do now? Shall we also follow your example? And he says, please do, if you can do the same as I show you. And he ate uh, a fist full of needles and took it out from his side. Huh? Such was his mastery of the uh, body that he could do just incredible things. I don't know, I was not there. <laughs> it is really incredible. But uh, anyway, this is a legend of his mastery of yoga, which must have been incredible, whether it is true or not. So, he was not only a, a universal philosopher, also knower of all Indian traditions, not only Buddhism, but he was also an amazing yogi, accomplished Siddha. Now, the text we are going to talk about is, uh, is uh, concerned with the practice of dhyana the essence, so to say, of the practice of dhyana. It may have not been, uh, according to many scholars, including uh, uh, Professor William Willemann, who has also translated the text and who has, uh, in a way, helped me with the translation of this text. I have uh, revised some things due to his advice. So uh, he believes that the text must have been written, uh, his translation and the text I'm going to talk about, not by Kumarajiva himself, but by his, some of his disciples who have jotted down his uh, teaching. And of course, it is Indian tradition that the disciples who jot the who put down the teachings of the Master, put it in the Master's name. They will never mention their name. So this is probably the case of our text also. Uh, it was uh, compiled by someone who followed uh, Kumarajiva's teachings on the uh, yoga tradition, Buddhist yoga tradition. As you may know, the uh, Buddhist uh, yoga tradition is based on the practice of the dhyanas. According to Abhidharma, the, there is no middle way without the samadhi and the, without the right samadhi, sama samadhi, and the sama samadhi means the eight samapatis, the four dhyanas into the subtle forms and four dhyanas into the formless, they are uh, taught in the Abhidharma as the content of the uh, right samadhi. Of course, the samadhi is a concept which, uh, according to Abhidharma, we, when we uh, have cognition process, there must be samadhi. Samadhi is what holds the other mental factors together. If they are not held together by samadhi, uh, we cannot uh, do anything. We cannot think. We think because our mental factors are held together. And that is a job of samadhi. So samadhi is 
so to say, belongs in Theravada tradition, also in Sarvastivada, among the Mahabhumikas, among the mental factors which are present in every process of cognition. And uh, Samadhi, as uh, we should all know in Indian tradition, is also the content of liberation. One who is liberated is in Samadhi and remains in Samadhi. Now, uh, this is a, this is the state of uh, Arahat, this is a state of uh, Pratyeka Buddha, and this is a state also of the uh, uh, Samyak Sambuddha, of the Supreme Realized Buddha. The, when one becomes a Buddha, no matter in what vehicle, Buddha being the realized one, the awakened one, then one remains in Samadhi. The process of wisdom is also the process of increasing Samadhi. Uh, when we are uh, Sotapanna, we have uh, uh, basic Samadhi. When we are Sakadagami, the deeper Samadhi, Anagami, the deeper Samadhi, and Arahat, Samadhi cannot interrupt his Samadhi because he would have defilement. So, Samadhi basically means the uh, right application of the mind to object. We can say from the linguistical point of view, we can relate Samadhi to Adhana, which means placing. And sam means correct and means placing in a balanced way. To place mind correctly on the object is to place it in a balanced way. So there, there is no place for defilement. When the mind is placed on the object in a balanced way, there is no place for defilement. This is very important to understand. And the way to put the mind in a balanced way on the object is to practice a dhyana. Actually, in uh, uh, the Agamas, no matter whether the southern or northern tradition, in the Agamas, the dhyana is always taught before vipassana. There is as far as my knowledge goes, is only one exception to the rule, which is a Susima Sutta of the Samyutta Nikaya, which uh, uh, will uh, give the idea that one can become an Arahat even without practicing the, uh, the Rupa and Arupa Jhanas and without having a supernatural powers. But in all the other uh, discourses of the Buddha related to Agama, you will find always the practice of Dhyana preceding the practice of Vipassana. So this is also the case of the Kashmiri tradition. You necessarily have to practice the Dhyana, then you practice the uh, Vipassana. Now, this, uh, there is a tradition which uh, combines the concentration with wisdom, and there is a tradition which uh, kind of has tendency to separate the training in concentration from the training in wisdom. There are two traditions. Now, as you may know, the Yogacara tradition and Yogacara tradition is also based on the Kashmiri Yoga tradition. The base for the Yogacara tradition is uh, Asangas or Maitreyas uh, uh, Yogacara Bhumishastra. Yogacara Bhumishastra is, uh, uh, has 
is the yoga of so-called 17 bhumis, 17 stages of yoga. All the stages except the bodhisattva stage, they actually explain the Shravaka path. Only one bhumi, the bodhisattva bhumi, explains the bodhisattva path and is the base for uh, other elaborations of the bodhisattva path, philosophical elaborations, which appeared later. And uh, it's also is inspired Dharma Pala to uh, in the uh, Charita Pitaka, which explains in Theravada the Bodhisattva path. Uh, you, when you study the Charita Pitaka, you will actually find uh, literal, uh, so to say. Uh, uh, transplantation of the Asangas Bodhisattva Bhumi into the uh, uh, Charita Pitaka. The same terms, sometimes very slight variation. So, of course, the uh, time of uh, Kashmiri Yoga, 3rd and 4th century in India, it came to China in the 5th century, the time of uh, Kumarajima, 5th, 6th century. And it became the predominant trend in practice. In those times, according to historical records, the Chinese yogis tried, uh, started to uh, go on a long, long journey to India especially to Kashmir, and uh, many remained there, many died there. Hmm? Uh, we have only records of very few. Among them, uh, to this period, belongs Fashien, who is the, uh, as far as I know, the earliest report of the Indian conditions in those times, which are roughly the times of Kumaraji. So, uh, uh, Kumarajiva is inheritor of this Kashmiri yoga tradition, which is uh, deeply based also in Sautrantika approach, same like Vasubandhu Abhidharma Kosha, even so it is not, Sautrantika was never an, an organized sect, it was an assembly of many different thinkers, like Hari Varman, uh, Tattva Siddhi Shastra has his own ideas, uh, the, uh, uh, and others have also their own very different ideas. And uh, strangely enough, this Kashmiri Yoga is inspired by the main teachers of Sarvastivada, uh, Dharmatrata, Goshaka, huh? They are the yogis who inspired the Kashmiri tradition of yoga and who also introduced it indirectly to China. So, uh, uh, this period is a period when three vehicles were studied. A very important work of this time is Shushin uh, Tauti Lun by Sangaraksha. This uh, book also is kind of related to what Kumarajiva has to say, and it uh, was very inf influential in this period. It uh, presents the uh, perspective of Buddhism from the perspective of the three different yanas, just as the uh, Asanga does in Yogacara Bhumi Shastra. So this was a period when uh, the three yanas were studied side by side. We know from COT, from the travel uh, journal of Xianzang who visited 
India at the time of uh, the Emperor Harsha, the gr last great emperor of India. In those times, in the time of Xianzang, in the time of uh, uh, this time, uh, the uh, we are told that the followers of the Shravakayana of different traditions, uh, followers of uh, the Bodhisattva Yana of Mahayana, they lived in the same monastery and practiced the same uh, methods of meditation. And among these methods of meditation, the basic method and the most important method was the dhyanas. The dhyanas, as I have said, the basic dhyanas, which are the base for basic samadhi, uh, the uh, rupa dhyanas and the arupa dhyanas. The eight samapatis, which are also the content of shamatha. According to Theravana tradition, uh, we have, so to say, ten kinds of jhana. We have so-called upachara jhana, proximate jhana, where using the Theravada theory, the mind still can fall into bhavanga and change the object. Then we have the first, second, third, fourth dhyana in the subtle forms and the, the four formless dhyanas. And we have the vipassana dhyana. In order to practice vipassana, strictly speaking, we also need the dhyana. The mind has to have the power of seeing the uh, momentary nature of impermanent, kshanika, anitya. And kshanita, kshanika, anitya, kshanika, uh, samadhi is the vipassana samadhi. Now, according to the Theravada tradition to practice vipassana, we have to go out of dhyana, then we can practice vipassana. Because in the Theravada theory, in order to change the object, we, the mind has to fall into uh, the mind base called in Theravada bhavanga in order to change the object. Now, uh, the uh, Yoga tradition related to Yogacara, but it has roots much earlier also in Kashmiri Buddhism, came with the concept of Alaya consciousness. Alaya consciousness, according to Asanga, according to Xianzang, is just a synonym of Bhavanga. But in uh, this, uh, in this tradition, the uh, uh, traditional tr uh, training in dhyana, of course, is a base, but it is insatisfactory because in dhyana the mind is merged with the object and mind which is merged with the object cannot uh, differentiate. In order to differentiate, we need vitarka, we need vichara, we need to change the object. Hmm? And the alaya consciousness is not just a consciousness of uh, when we die and when we are reborn, but it is the all-including consciousness. So it is a base for liberation and it is also the base for samsara.
And this alaya concept allows then, we, according to Theravada tradition, uh, there is a verse in the Dhammapada which says, Nati jhanam apanyasa, nati panya ajanasa, yasa panya cha jhanam sa cha so nibbana sa santike. There is no dhyana without wisdom, no wisdom without dhyana. One who is who has wisdom and dhyana, he is in the vicinity of nirvana. This is interpreted in Theravada tradition as one who has attained the super mundane samadhi based on uh, shunyata, animita, uh, apranihita. These are the three doors of the super mundane samadhi. In all Buddhist traditions, same. And when this door is open, then the middle path will be will appear in its com complete. That means the uh, seven causes of awakening and the eight uh, causes of the middle path will appear at the same time. Otherwise, they can never appear at the same time. Now, the uh, this tradition, Yogacara tradition, and uh, Kashmiri Buddhism is related to the Yogacara tradition. Uh, connects the uh, wisdom and samadhi to the state of prasharabdhi, to the state of what is translated as kamanyata. I translate uh, prasharabdhi as uh, the uh, clarity and relaxation. And it contains such aspect as lahuta, lightness, straightness, ujjuta, kamanyata, uh, nipunata, uh, the uh, muduta, uh, uh, flexibility, uh, straightness, lightness. Uh, uh, all these aspects, they appear when this uh, prasharabdi appears. In Theravada, these aspects form, in a way, separate mental factors. So important they were considered to be. Now, we don't need necessarily the uh, uh, super mundane object because the mind is the source of all objects. So, this tradition studies then on the base of Prashrabdi, studies then the intimate link between the Samadhi and wisdom in the state of one-pointed mind. Because in the one-pointed mind, the meditator sees very clearly that all objects appear from the mind itself. There is no place for other doors in a deep samadhi, in a deep dhyana. Then the conclusion is that actually, and which Mahayana emphasizes as a base for meditation, that actually all objects come from the mind. By studying the mind, we can understand all the objects. And to study the mind, the uh, best base is to study dhyanas. Because in the dhyanas, the mental body becomes predominant. The five senses go into the background and if we are to believe, if we are great masters, 
I don't have such an experience, then cease altogether. When uh, uh, the uh, teachers of uh, Sakyamuni Buddha meditated, 500 bullock cars passed by their feet and they did not hear anything. When the Sakyamuni as a bodhisattva meditated in the forest, the trees were falling next to his uh, feet and they did not hear anything. Of course, this is beyond our understanding, but it is very often the standard explanation of the dhyana. So many people believe that the dhyana is something beyond our capability, that if one, even especially in Theravada countries, if one studies dhyana, one can become mad because one does not hear anything, one does not feel anything. So... Uh, the emphasis shifted from the practice of dhyana to the practice of uh, the so-called dry vipassana. But in the early times, especially we can see in the Kashmiri tradition, in the early Buddhism, no matter whether the Shravaka yana or the Bodhisattva yana, the practice of the dhyana we can also see from this text the practice of the dhyana was a base for the practice of both the uh, one-pointed concentration and wisdom together. If we want to understand the northern tradition and its later development, Kashmiri yoga has a root also in a Zen tradition, is root for Zen tradition and is also root for the Tantric tradition, which then do not separate the study of dhyana from the study of wisdom. And in order to do that, you do not necessarily need to go through all the stages described here. to attain all the eight samapatis. You can uh, study the real nature of the mind through uh, studying the one-pointed mind. Now, in this text, this text uh, propagates the study of the traditional classical methods of dhyana. But we have in the background, and it is also very, it relates it to this uh, Kashmiri tradition. At the background, we have uh, this idea of connecting the uh, uh, jhana with wisdom, especially you will see it in the later part, in the study of the Brahma Viharas and the study of the Arupas. This is very important aspect. They connected this study with the study of the emptiness. You will find it also predominant tendency in the uh, Sangha Rakshas, uh, the stages of the practice of uh, the uh, of yoga. This uh, treatise presents uh, the uh, uh, perspective of the bodhisattva and also presents the perspective of the shravaka. And we see the similar tendency in our text. It presents the subject matter from the traditional trainings of the Shravaka, but introduces some uh, perspectives of the Bodhisattvayana. So uh, they are also 
from what I have read in the Kashmiri tradition, there was a gradual pass, and there was more emphasis on the sudden realization, based on the study of the mind. And uh, the uh, traditional step-by-step -step path you will find in the Abhidharma Kosha, not so much in Abhidharma Kosha, but in other treatises, in order to study the Vishesha Lakshanas, the particular characteristics of objects, the study of Anapana and Asubha is used. These are the only objects introduced in uh, for the uh, realization for the uh, in the sixth chapter of uh, Abhidharma Kosha for the uh, realization of the path. Then you have the Chatudhatu Vavatana, the analysis of the four elements as uh, the uh, uh, for understanding the common characteristics of all the objects, impermanence, uh, anitya, dukkha, anatta. Hmm? So this was common in the gradual path. But you have tendency in this text, you have tendency in the Sangha uh, Raksha's text, which is in a way related to our text, to Komarajiva's uh, text, and which is related also to kind of to the Pragya Paramita Sutras, which uh, the uh, Komarajiva translated, and to the Nagarjuna's ideas, which he also translated and brought. Uh, the study of these dhyanas for the purpose of direct experience of emptiness. And this direct experience of em emptiness can only come from understanding the mind. This is common to all so-called Mahayana traditions. But you will find this tendency already well grounded in this Kashmiri tradition of yoga. As you may know, the Kashmir has not only produced uh, excellent uh, uh, yogis in the Buddhist tradition, it has also produced excellent yogis in the Hindu tradition. And uh, the uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, most important treatise on yoga, like Yoga Vashishta, belongs to this tradition uh, and relates again the Yogacara tradition of mind only to the uh, Hindu tradition of Advaita Vedanta and even Samkhya. So uh, uh, the Kashmir had a very important role to play in the syncretic. It was not just with uh, uh, Yoga Vashishta, long time before Abhinava Gupta, before these uh, great personalities that uh, everybody learns about in Indian in history of Indian philosophy. It was a tendency long before him. And we already see this tendency in Kumarajiva to see Buddhism from different perspectives, not uh, to indulge in a sectarian understanding of Buddhism. Each perspective has uh, its uh, pluses and should be studied and should be understood. So with this introduction, we can, so that we don't spend too much time on introduction, we come slowly to our text. And in the 
next Wednesday I will start with the first three chapters of the text. The first chapter is Meditation on the Impure. You have heard that in most of the books you have as an introduction to the practice of meditation. You have, like in Abhidharma Kosha, Anapana, Ken Asuba. In Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, you have five so called uh, Charita Vishodana uh, practices. For you have Asuba, you have uh, Anapana, you have, which is very interesting, you have Paticha Samupada for those who are dull, like myself, those who are bright, Mana Charita, you have the meditation on the six elements, hmm? uh, being the four Mahabhutas, space and mind. This is all we beings are, nothing else. And the uh, Manacharita. And uh, you have Metta meditation for uh, the uh, Dvesha Charitas. To first, we have to purify, purify the Charita in order to be able to meditate. And because in Buddhism, which is especially uh, the, based on the understanding of the Four Noble Truths, which boil down to one truth in the Mahayana Buddhism. But in order to understand one truth, we have to understand four truths. Truths of suffering, the cause of suffering, truths of the... Uh, cessation of suffering and truth of the way leading to the cessation of suffering. And truth of cause of suffering is tanha, greed. So no, so this text starts with Asuba Bhavana to reduce the cause of suffering in order to introduce us into meditation, into the practice of dhyanas. Hmm? So, uh, the Asuba Bhavana is a kind of a step to reduce the, our desires. Abhidharma Kosha teaches in order to meditate, we need uh, Alpe Ichata and Santushti. We need few desires and contentment. And we have no contentment and we have many desires because we have tanha. And uh, the uh, most of our time we are thinking about the uh, pancha kama gunas, hmm? the five objects of the senses. Please check your own mind how much <laughs> time we spend contemplating the Panchakamagunas, the five objects of the senses and how much time we spend contemplating the Dharma. Hmm? So no wonder we find uh, it difficult to uh, practice naturally one-pointedness. When we practice naturally one-pointedness, it becomes, meditation becomes very easy. So, uh, I see that our time is approaching. So, in uh, our next lesson, we will study first the uh, Kumarajiva's presentation of the Asuba. It is very interesting because in the Northern tradition, Asuba does not mean you have a pure Asuba and so-called impure asuba. This is, uh, you can study asuba in order, you can study uh, object, objects leading to disgust, to nirveda, in order to uh, get a deep 
samadhi into the shubha object. So uh, this is very important to understand. This is very important for developing wisdom. What is pure and what is impure depends on the mind. The same impure object can become a pure object. Depends how we make it in the mind. So anyway, so we will discuss all these things. Uh, so next Friday, uh, next uh, Wednesday, we will discuss the meditation on the impure. And I hope if we find time, we will discuss also the second part dealing with uh, the preparation for dhyana so that we can come to the five hindrances which are in classical Buddhism that which separates us from dhyana when we have separated from five hindrances we can enter the dhyana so uh, in order to enter the dhyana we have to practice the five jhana angas the five causes of the jhana when they have ripened our mind flows naturally into the state of jhana we do not need to struggle if we struggle from for jhana and if we attach to jhana it will be not sama samadhi it will be micha samadhi not based on sama sati but based on the micha sati so sama samadhi is based on Samasati, Micha Samadhi is based on uh, Micha Sati. This is very important to understand. So we will talk more about it. In order to get Sama Samadhi, we have to detach. And detachment is also the essence of the practice of jhana. We cannot practice jhana without detachment. That's why also the text starts with meditation of, on impure and it considers it to be the uh, sufficient in order to enter the training of, in five jhana angas to remove the five nivaganas, the five obstacles. So that much for today. And uh, we will now, uh, this was more like an introduction, and now we will go more to the text. And uh, we don't need to read uh, sentence by sentence. I will just choose always the most important part hmm, and discuss it uh, more in detail. Hmm? Okay. So uh, that much for today. Thank you for your attention. I hope uh, this uh, little introduction will be of use and then we go straight into the text. Okay. Uh, uh, there is one question if you would like to take it. It's mm -hmm. not about the text, but it's uh, generally about what we spoke. So with your permission, could I share it with you? Yes, sure. Okay. So uh, this participant says, Venerable Bhante, thank you for your teachings. Uh, do the eight Samapatis have correlates in Vajrayana? Because it seems that jhanas are not emphasized in Vajrayana, at least in the way in which it is taught today, according to some. So what is the relationship between sense experience as understood in Vajrayana and Jnana practice which requires withdrawal of the senses? Uh, yes, it is a very good question, of course. But uh, it is very important to understand if you want to understand Vajrayana and you want to understand Mahayana, Mahayana and Vajrayana cannot be really strictly divided. Vajrayana is only the uh, 
the special methods for understanding the Mahayana. The philosophy is exactly the same. So uh, now this why we are talk. I have talked about this Kashmiri tradition and so on. You have the uh, you have in the Vajrayana also. You have the uh, the arising stage and you have the completion stage. In this uh, tradition of Kashmiri tradition, you have also the gradual path and the so-called uh, uh, path of direct investigation of the mind. And it is also based on the uh, so arising stage and the completion stage. This is very important. A rising stage means you have to have a, a deep understanding of what you're doing. And you have to understand the mind being the base of all we experience and the, the nature of the mind being like the space. This is very important. In uh, the Theravada tradition, the uh, actually mind has a, a certain location. The the, the uh, base of the mind, so called Hadayavatu, is in the heart, which is kind of a physical base, and the door of the mind is is Bhavanga. Now. Uh, so uh, it is a kind of uh, separation between the base and the door. But this is very unsatisfactory for the other schools of Buddhist philosophy. They have always criticized it. The, mind, the base of the mind actually is uh, very difficult to locate. And this is the contemplation of the secret of the mind is the door for Zen practice, is also a door for the Tantra practice. Through the mind we create our world. So it is very important to have jhanas. If you have them, it is good. Nobody condemns jhanas should not condemn jhanas. In the Agamas, when you read the jhana Samyutta, Buddha compares Nirvana to the other shore. And we are on this shore still subjected due to our avijja to uh, ignorance, to defilements. Now, if we want to, Buddha says, if we want to attain the other shore, which is free from defilements, we have to know how to swim. And he compares swimming to the practice of the jhanas. But I have told you, we have the vipassana jhana and we have also shamatha jhana. The Theravada tradition tends to separate them. The practice of samadhi is not uh, the practice of shamatha is not the practice of vipassana practice of vipassana uh, is separated strictly speaking from the practice of shamatha but in the northern tradition starting even with the yogacara in yogacara bhumi shastra the uh, uh, important is to connect the aspect of wisdom and the aspect of uh, concentration together. And that happens in the state of Prashrabdi. In the state of Prashrabdi is necessarily connected with Sankara Upeksha. Sankara Upeksha. There is no the, uh, powerful kusala chitta according to all Buddhist traditions without sankhara upekha. 
If we don't have Sankara Upekra, there is no question of a powerful Kushala mind, powerful healthy mind. And uh, this uh, Kushala Chitta and uh, becomes powerful when there is detachment, there is concentration and detachment. And that happens in the uh, Yogacara scheme of meditation when you have attained the stage of Shamayati, the sixth stage. You have appeased the mind. You have appeased the mind, all the factors, wholesome factors of the mind become very clear. So you can you can join the shamatha and vipassana together. And this is also the base for uh, the uh, uh, the Mahayana, so-called Mahayana practices, Zen, the Tantric practices. We create, the, the mind creates the objects. But we do not see it. We have to have the state of prashrabdi, of relaxation and clarity in order to see it. And uh, where is a mind, such a mind? <laughs> it is uh, very difficult to locate. There is a story of transmission of Zen into China. The first Chinese patriarch, Hui Ke, he was so devoted and had such deep faith in Bodhidharma who has been sitting nine years in the cave, that uh, not speaking, that in order to get some instructions for him and show him his devotion, he cut off his hand and put it in front of him, hmm? asking him to appease his mind. And he was practicing very hard and with such a incredible willpower, which we impossible to imagine. Now Bodhidharma just asked him to show his mind that he will appease it. And this is how the Zen tradition was transferred to China. He could not find the mind. So Bodhidharma told him, I have appeased it. So this is this is uh, the secret of the uh, the methods which start in a way with this Kashmiri yoga, Kashmiri Buddhism. There is a gradual path, and there is a path of the direct understanding of the mind. But these two paths are not something which is uh, opposed to each other; they complement each other. This is very important to understand and so often misunderstood. The gradual path and the sudden path, they are complementary, not opposed to each other. Uh, this uh, sudden realization is also in Theravada Buddhism. Ananda uh, became uh, Arahat, when he was tired and completely relaxed and uh, uh, put his uh, head on the pillow to, to rest, uh, that is when his uh, realization came. And it was so powerful that uh, he became one of the most powerful arahats and uh, also according to the Zen tradition, the uh, one who after Sariputta became the patriarch of the uh, Zen realization. Zen means dhyana, chan. But the meaning has changed. It does not mean necessarily anymore 
these eight samapatis, it means the dhyana which uh, links shamatha and vipassana into one taste. And you will find it in Theravada also. Ekarasa, Patisambhidamaga, read uh, uh, Anapana section. The mastery is Ekarasa, vimu, Vimutirasa. So these uh, things are not uh, contradictory to the Theravada tradition. It is just another aspect. You will find most of the Mahayana theories, they are rooted in uh, the uh, Theravada, in the yoga tradition, which is also referred to in Visuddhimagga, also referred to in the uh, Abhidharma Kosha. All the philosophers, they had great respect for the so-called Purva Acharyas. Purva Acharyas, according to even Valérie de la Poussin, they are no one else than the, than the yogis. The yogis are the Purva Acharyas, the old teachers. And they were often consulted to resolve all the philosophical uh, difficulties. Because in Indian tradition, uh, the samadhi is pramana, is uh, the uh, right, uh, the path to knowledge. So, uh, Buddha Gosa refers to Purva Acharyas, the Vasubandhu refers to Purva Acharyas, hmm? the uh, other text also refers to Purva Acharyas. They are the yogis who have uh, attained the, or are close to attaining the ultimate samadhi. Ultimate samadhi, no place for agitation. Okay. No more questions. Shall we finish here? Hmm? Um, okay. Uh, there is one question, but we could take it next week. No, still, there is some time. If it is some good question, please think of some good questions so that we can, uh, all of us, benefit, including myself. Hmm? Give me some challenge so that I can think. Hmm? So, could I ask this one, which is okay. there in the chat box? Um, so, uh, this participant requests that the question is related to the 10th Vipassana Dhyana. Tenth, Why is it 10th yeah. Vipassana Dhyana? Mm -hmm. Why is it explained in the context of subtle impermanence? rather than union of shamatha and vipassana on emptiness as the object. Well, because it studies, I have mentioned, it studies the, the samanya lakshana, the common characteristics of all objects. If there is an object and the mind which uh, is attached to it, which holds to it, then it is impermanent. And it, it is dualism from the point of view of uh, the, if you want to understand the Mahayana meditation, it is dualism. All that we experience in the world is a dualism. When there is subject and object, it is a dualism. And when there is subject and object, it is impermanence. This is the secret of Buddhism. This is the strength of Buddhism. This is the advantage of the uh, Buddhist Advaita. 
So all we experience is actually is uh, anicca, dukkha, anatta, because we experience dualism, and the mind is not the dual. This is the secret of the mind. So we can study it step by step, and we can also study it from the perspective of the end and for the perspective of the beginning. So, Kumarajiva, in his treatise, not this treatise, the other treatise I have mentioned, he says the uh, uh, Paticca Samupada has to be studied step by step. First you start with the last and the first link of the twelve uh, uh, Nidanas. Then you... Uh, start practicing for the intermediate, for the adhikarmika, for the beginner, only first and the last. For the intermediate, in the middle. For the uh, advanced, for those who have surpassed attention, that means the masters, for them all together. So, this is how can be all together. Where does all together come from? From the mind itself. Okay, so let us transfer merit for the benefit of sentient beings. I will use the Pali version and uh, we can finish for today and uh, continue next week, same time. Hmm? Eta vata chame hi sampatam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu. Sabha Sampati Siddhiya Eta Vata Chame Hi Sampatam Punya Sampada Sabbe Bhuta Anumodantu Sabha Sampati Siddhiya Eta Vata Chame Hi Sampatam Punya Sampada Sabbe Satta Anumodantu Sabha Sampati Siddhiya Aka Satta Chabumatha Deva Naga Mahidika Punyantan Anumoditwa Chiramarakantuloka Aka Satta Chabumatha Deva Naga Mahitika Punyanta Nanumoditwa Chiramarakantu Desana Aka Satta Chabumatha Deva Naga Mahitika Punyanta Nanumoditwa Chiramarakantu Tumampana Devo Vasatuka Lene Sasa Sampati Hotucha Pito Bavatulo Kocha Raja Bhavatu Dhammiko Sadhu 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 So see you next week. Hmm? Okay. Bye bye.